There's some good news for EV buyers and some bad news for NEO investors, but uh, those two things should not come as a surprise. But what are they? Well, the cars are hard to steal, and then NEO is uh, having trouble getting profitable and staying uh, out of the deep, deep, dark crimson red. Uh, let's get into that. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> Randy here joining me because he knows a bit about markets and he knows a bit about trends and he knows a whole lot about really loud shirts. Randy, welcome. <laughs> How are you? Welcome to you as well. Who loud shirts me? <laughs> when 1010 comes and you go to one of the peripheral parties, you yes. will be spotted. That's the, that's the thing. That's the thing. I'm like so average otherwise. Yeah. I, average, average height. I, I wear the shoe size that they use as a display unit in stores because it's the air, the average shoe hmm. size. I mean, so I'm so average. I needed something. It's interesting That's, that they would use that and not a different size that, that isn't average, but presents better. I would think maybe they would, but yeah, there you go. Interesting, yeah. interesting yeah. stuff. Randy. Start, start. Uh, we'll start with the good news. Five reasons why electric vehicles uh, are less stolen. Can you guess what they are? Uh, number one would be um, the most of the electric vehicles are Teslas, and Teslas are horribly difficult to steal. That's 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 kind of it. That is kind of it. Uh, so uh, why are thieves stealing cars? We're going to skip that one because if you don't know the answer to that, well. <laughs> Technology has become an enabler rather than a deterrent. Technology has made cars more difficult, to, hasn't made cars more difficult to steal. On the contrary, yes, it has. Yes, it has. It absolutely has. Anything can be stolen. Come on. Uh, if you really wanted to steal a Tesla, what you would do is winch it up into a box uh, trailer with a Faraday cage. Done. But no one's going to do that because there's a lot of cost. There's a lot of hassle. There's a lot of right. risk, but electric vehicles consistently rank among the least stolen. So here we go. Thefts per hundred thousand insured for 21 to 23. Where do you think uh, Tesla's going to fall on this list? I, I kind of saw this list on Axel a couple of days ago. So you already you know, know. It's fair. It's not fair. And <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, and where's the Model Y? So, uh, number one, surveillance systems on wheels. Yeah, sentry mode. I, yeah. I can see your face, my friend. That's going to make it harder for you to get away with it. Absolutely. Now, it's easy to put on a mask, sure. Uh, number two, EVs are usually protected by advanced software that is difficult to access and crack. You can't just spark a couple wires under the dashboard <laughs> and away you go. Uh, and my car, I use pin to drive. So if you were to carjack me, if you were to come up and point a gun in my face and say, get out, I would get out. But the car's in park now and you need the pin. So you can't, right. you, you're not going anywhere. All you can do is sit in there. Number three, exciting times. EVs are continuously reporting their live location and you can't exactly just deactivate the transponder. You can do it. It has been mm -hmm. done, but it's non-trivial. And then we've got lack of EV charging infrastructure. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to, well, but let's give the real answer to this, which is I can deactivate the charging on my car. If, right. if you steal my car, if my son steals my car and I want that, I want him to stop driving it. I just deactivate the credit card and he can no longer charge unless right. he finds someone's house who will let him use a charger. Right. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, parts are hard to sell because the EV fleet is small and most people still use uh, official sales channels. That's true. You can't just, it's not like a Honda Accord where those parts can just go on eBay and disappear in infinite sure. quantities. Mm -hmm. um, I would add to this uh, that, especially with the Highland Model 3, it's really hard to break into. The windows are all laminated. It's hard to force your way inside of it. Yeah. So you have all those things. And, and of course, the, the, I, was in this, I started my life in the security business, uh, selling small security hardware, but learned a ton about the security game. And we had a, we had a rule in the security business that was, uh, the, we called it the good neighbor policy. If you make your vehicle, your house, your bicycle, whatever, less attractive to steal or more difficult to steal because of security, then it's more likely they'll steal your neighbor's 
So we call that the good neighbor policy. <laughs> that sounds like the opposite of a good neighbor. I like the nomenclature. So uh, that's enough good news for today, Randy. Okay. I'll now we're, now oh. we're talking. <laughs> of course, you have to put Tesla in the title. Tesla's oh, yeah. Chinese oh. rival snags $1.9 billion investment from parent and strategic investors as it forays into the mass market. Now we've got a few different takes on this, but what do you think about that? Did they really snag $2 billion and did they need it? Well, I think they needed it. I didn't read the article. to find. I, I, I am not a, hugely interested in the competition. I want to know about them and I want to know kind of what they're doing. Uh, but overall, I've always had the philosophy that you make your product as good as you could possibly make it, make it crazy good, and don't worry too much about the comp. But having said that, we have been watching Neo. We've been watching Neo burn cash, not make money constantly, consistently. But I didn't read to find out whether they're really going to get that $2 billion. Are they really going to get it? Unit of Chinese EV Maker actually gets $471 million. The rest, oh. The rest is in notes purchased by their parent company. Uh, so that's not quite the same thing. It's not really new money. Uh, yeah. The problem Neo is having a subsidiary uh, has received 3.3 billion uh, yuan 471 in fresh capital from a consortium of investors backed by the local province who wants the factory to remain open. So these are yeah. government subsidies. These are the things yeah. that put them in the 28% tariff or higher bracket rather than the 9% tariff bracket, because this is absolutely at this point, a heavily government subsidized endeavor. Uh, and with this new balance sheet, sheet, Neo will be strategically positioned to maintain its advantages. It added that the Shanghai based car maker has the right to subscribe another 20 billion yuan worth of shares by the end of 2025. The fundraising deal comes months after Neo, which is not profitable, secured 2.2 billion from CYVN Holdings uh, by the uh, control by Abu Dhabi. So this is a uh, really, really tricky. If only, uh, and and I I'm wondering, would it be better if instead of powering their cars with batteries with electricity, if it'd be more profitable if Neo just burnt cash and oh, yes. uh, steam powered with a furnace of cash in each vehicle? It seems, yeah, yeah. I think it would. It, yeah, I think it would do pretty good. Um, AJ, hello, Joe, on X does fantastic work. So we are going to rely on him. I think Bloomberg is misreporting on the Neo Capital injection. They're not receiving two billion in capital. They're only getting a half billion. Bloomberg erroneously adds the mention that one point four billion, the Neo investment amount. Uh, this is just Neo's downstreaming of capital from the parent company to the Neo China subsidiary. In other words, uh, they're it's they're just shuffling money around. <laughs> You know, uh, that that would be, yeah, that'd be like Cadillac raised $2 billion. I mean, 1.5 billion of it was from GM. Right. Well, wait a minute, what? That's not, <laughs> that's not an investment, my friend. AJ does great work. Neo just announced a 460 million capital raise. I predicted Neo would raise more capital before year end in December of 2023. See attached based on cash flow analysis. I also predicted accurately Neo's prior capital raises. I'm not sure what AJ's day job is, but it's clear that he is or was an analyst of some sort. Fellow rebellionaire, we have talked a couple times, but not uh, like in person or anything. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. He, he is. Uh, he definitely is in in a in a position where he he does need on a regular basis to value things. Yes. Yes. And he's very good at reading the ten Qs. The yeah, right. all, the, all the statements. Attached is an excerpt from a Neo research report I shared with subscribers. This was from last week. However, I predicted the current capital raise almost a year ago because this red line represents uh, financial death. You can only get to about a billion before your credit falls apart. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. I guess on here he's saying five billion, four and a half billion. When you get under four and a half billion, your creditors start to get a little antsy and your rates go up. When Elon said in 2019 that we are just weeks, we were days away from bankruptcy. 
a few weeks later, we got to see the financials and see that uh, they still had cash on hand, like a lot of it. He didn't mean they were literally out of cash. He meant that when you get below a certain point, your ability to move cash becomes very difficult. And this is where Neo is routinely treading. Uh, they've got a real tough financial situation and the battery swaps is eating them alive because they're trying to build out this massive network of charging swap stations, which are extremely capital intensive, requires all these extra batteries, all this extra logistics, and only works in China. Because in, in the US, there's a patchwork of utilities. You can't just arbitrage every location into the grid. You can't get the good rates everywhere. It's a mess. So do they uh, are they even more subject to a problem when solid state batteries become a thing and, uh, and it becomes obvious that you want the battery in your car instead of a battery that you're swapping out all the time? That's a great question. As batteries get better, the necessity of a swap becomes less and less. And Let's a see. problem I've had with Neo is that their last big event, they said, check it out. We've got a new generation battery swap that's even faster. Oh, and we've also got a battery that charges even faster, so fast that, I mean, who needs a swap? And I'm like, well, you don't need yeah. both of these things. You need one or the other. And if either one of them is as good as you say, you, why would you even work on the other uh, unless you're lying about one or both of them? Uh, so there's, and the real problem I've tried to point out with battery swaps is different people want different batteries, but different cars need different batteries. If Tesla had gone all in on battery swaps with the Model S and X, what happens when they want to build the three and Y? That battery is too large. Do, right. we, do, we, do we now have two different kinds of batteries plus two different or sizes seven. of each one? Well, then, then we do, forget the S and X. We're just going to do a battery for the three and Y. It's going to be in 90% of our cars. Guess what? The Cybertruck is out. What are you going to do? Put a Model 3 battery in it for 80 miles of range? It won't fit. It's the wrong size. It's the physically the wrong size. You're tying yourself into a form factor for the rest of time. And it is much too early in the technology cycle to be dealing with it. Neo investors in the comments, please share your dumb wisdom because my <laughs> goodness, do you guys have crazy ideas? I've made a bunch of Neo videos and the Looney Tunes come out every time you have to zoom out and look at it. And by the way, these, these cash raises just diluted you some more. Eat that 1.9, uh, 1.5 billion that came in from the parent company doesn't actually add cash that wasn't there, but it does dilute you. Your shares just became less valuable. So that's superb. Speaking of <laughs> no value whatsoever, uh, support me on Patreon or YouTube as a channel member X as a subscriber, or you can use my referral code to get a thousand dollars off for a limited time. Act now supplies are limited. Uh, this is how I'm able to keep going. This is how I'm able to go on trips and missions and, and exciting endeavors and expeditions. Uh, and you know, Randy, I may be going to Malaysia in February for, Malaysia. for the Tesla con that they are holding, oh. but I do not have a way to fund it at this time. So if you're a sponsor out there and you're looking for someone to get your brand out in the world, let me know because I'm not going otherwise so everybody else you know uh do a couple things for me head on over to randy kirk's channel find out what he's up to and report back because i'm not going in there it's too it's there's too much information my head gets full and for the rest of you like subscribe do the usual leave a comment or 20 and stay tuned stay juicy and i cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in malaysia maybe